The newest issue of V-Jump is out, and we've got four, count them, four new characters announced for Dragon Ball Fighters. Well, two of them actually aren't new per se. Whatever, I'll get into it. So, the four new characters for today are Super Saiyan Blue Goku, Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta, Android 18, and Android 16. In my opinion, these choices are all logical, but also a bit confusing at the same time. Let's start with those blue Super Saiyans. I was hoping that fighters would not have multiple forms of the same character available as separate playable characters. In my opinion, it makes the roster messy and takes away resources that could be going towards a more unique playable character. Like I said in an earlier video, I don't want to see this game end up being the Goku and Vegeta show with like 8 different Gokus and 6 different Vegetas. However, Goku and Vegeta are the two most popular characters in Dragon Ball by a pretty wide margin, so I guess if any characters deserve two playable versions, it would be these two. Also, Super Saiyan Blue Goku was playable in Extreme Butoden for the 3DS, so Arc System Works at least has a foundation to work from. According to V-Jump though, these two characters appear to play entirely different from the previously shown Super Saiyan forms. While we're not going to get a full feel for the characters until we see them in motion, the V-Jump scan does tell us a little bit about them. So Super Saiyan Blue Goku's super move is the 10 times Kaioken Kamehameha, which makes sense. And then Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta's super move is the final flash. There's also a rumor going around that Super Saiyan Blue Goku will have a Kaioken install super. It would act much like Frieza's Golden Frieza install super, which means it works on a timer and would increase the character's speed and power. I think that would be amazing because Kaioken Super Saiyan Blue is probably the coolest form we've seen so far in Dragon Ball Super. So I would love to body someone in this game as Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken. So to wrap up on these two, I think this opens up the possibility of seeing multiple forms of the same characters in this game. It wouldn't surprise me to see like Majin Vegeta, for example, become available at some point, with the obvious level 3 being his final atonement explosion sacrifice thing. Also, Super Saiyan 4 is still incredibly popular in Japan and in Dragon Ball games, so I totally expect to see Super Saiyan 4 Goku and Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta as DLC at some point. Next up is Android 18. 18 was also playable in Extreme Batoden, so I figured she had a very good shot at getting into fighters as a playable character. However, the bigger news here isn't the fact that 18 is playable, it's actually that... <laughs> 17 has been deconfirmed, for now at least. The V-Jump scan confirms that in one of 18's super moves, which is called the Axle Dance, 17 jumps into the fray to team up with 18 and whoop some ass. Usually when a completely separate character is part of someone's moveset like this, it usually means that that character isn't important enough to justify his or her own status as a separate playable character. And that makes me sad because, as I'm sure you know, Seventeen is currently playing a major part in Dragon Ball Super in the current Tournament of Power arc. So why exactly isn't Seventeen a separate playable character? I think I have an explanation for this. When it comes to fighting games, the playable character roster is usually one of the first things locked in and finalized during development. Devs can't be randomly adding new characters midway through development because it would throw off the game's balance and end up delaying things. So while I don't know exactly when fighters began development, or when the character roster was finalized, I think today's new announcements give us a couple of hints. With Super Saiyan Blue Goku, we see Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken as one of his super moves. The episode where Goku debuted the Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken was episode 39 of Dragon Ball Super, which aired in April of 2016 in Japan. So I think it's safe to say that it was around this time that Arc System Works locked in their roster, since they were clearly aware of Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken. However, a few weeks later, the Future Trunk Saga began airing, and we got our first look at the characters for that arc, including Future Trunks with his new blue-haired design. 
as we could see, Fighter's Future Trunks uses the Dragon Ball Z design and not the Super design. So I think it's safe to assume that they locked in the playable characters with knowledge of the Universe 6 arc, but not with knowledge of the Future Trunks arc, much less the Tournament of Power arc. So what does this all mean? Well, first of all, it means Hit might be a playable character, which would be dirty, but it also means that the team simply wasn't aware of the fact that Seventeen would be coming back to play such a prominent role in Dragon Ball Super. So they decided it would be okay to just include him as a part of one of 18 super moves, I guess. Basically, they done goofed. Even though it would be kind of weird, I hope 17 ends up being playable as DLC sometime down the road. I mean, we're already going to see multiple Gokus and Vegetas at this point, so what's the problem with another 17 popping up on the screen? I don't really see the problem. Finally, let's move on to the final new character announced today. And it's a character that I don't think was on too many people's radar, and that's Android 16. As we can see here, he has his patented Hell's Flash attack as a super, which is the move where he takes off his hands, and under his hands are cannons. 16 is a very interesting choice, but what's more interesting is his involvement in the game's story mode. We've got word that the fighter's story mode is a what-if story involving a resurrected Android 16, where, quote, the Super Warriors fall one by one. This is totally fascinating to me, and I'm curious how they're going to tell a compelling what-if story revolving around Android 16 of all characters. So that's about it from today's V-Jump Scans. Gamescom 2017 is next week, and I wouldn't be surprised to see some new fighters footage and character trailers. So hit that subscribe button and keep it locked to my channel for more Dragon Ball Fighters comparison videos, news, and breakdowns, and so much more, of course. Thanks again for watching, everyone, and take care.